This time I have two emergency lights in for service. These are the type of lights that would be first used to light an exit sign, but also to light a corridor in a commercial building when the power goes out. So they have batteries in them and chargers to keep the batteries on float charge. So when the power is interrupted, they light up and give you some light to get out in, in exit stairways, etc. I got two of them here. Both of them have problems. Let's check them out and see if we can get them going. So this is an emergency power. I guess it's an exit sign. That apparently it's not working. Yeah, it is. So we got red LEDs up here that light up the exit sign. And how these operate is they have a battery in them. If the power goes off, if I press the test switch, these lights should light up. Yeah, they're not. This was brought to me by one of my neighbors, an electrician, and uh, he took them out of, a, I guess, a building he was working in and uh, asked if I could look at it and see why they're not working. I got two of them. We're going to pop this open. The battery and the electronics is inside here. Battery, power supply, lamps. Let's see why they're not working. I hear the relay clicking. I think there's something on this board here that's at fault. This connector feels a bit loose. I'm just going to unplug it. We're going to pop the board out here. I think, I think we're going to find connection problems on this. This appears to be a little bit on the loose side. There's only two screws that hold the circuit board in. I mean, this is it's pretty simple, right? It's just a battery charger and some low voltage lights. In this case, is six volts. Those lights should be on now because the power is unplugged. Oh, uh, what do we got here? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I see where the fault is. I don't think that should wiggle like that. What do you guys think? Nah, I don't think so. Uh, I think we got a problem right here. This is where our fault is. Well, that would explain why the battery's not working. We'll just uh, solder these connectors back on. And I bet that'll fix this thing. I'm also going to do these ones over here because these ones look like they're out. So it's pretty dirty inside. I guess it was it was in a factory or or some business. And basically, what happens is every so often they will get an inspection. Either the fire department comes by to do an inspection, or the alarm company comes by to, to you know the fire alarm company comes by and they test it they walk up and they press the test switch and of course the light should come on and if they do then everything's good if they don't then they send out a service guy to service them in this case the batteries were just replaced right they were just replaced March 25 that's this year like they were just done and the fellow that brought them to me the electrician he changed out the battery and it still didn't work so he brought them down and brought them over to me we we'll resolder the transformer as well. This is the AC input for the transformer. So the AC power goes in here, right, on these two. Transformer drops the power down, and then you've got your the charging circuit, which is what this is here charging circuit and the relay here is what's going to turn on the power to the uh, lights. The lights operate exclusively off the battery. There will be a low voltage tap off this obviously to power the uh, the other lights up top here. Are they? Yeah, they're fed in through here DC. That clip doesn't want to stay on either so I'm just going to give that a bit of a, a squeeze. Just squeeze that down a bit. 
just so that it's uh, a better connection. Put this back together. Okay, now the lights work when they're under test. They should come on. There we go. When I unplug the power, the lights come on like they're supposed to. I take it if you disconnect power and connect power, the lights will not come on until you actually plug the power in. And that will reset it. So I plug in the power. Now the lights come on. Aha! There we go. So that one's fixed. So it was just connections on the battery terminals down here. That does the same as disconnecting the power. But if we disconnect and then reconnect, they won't come on initially <clears throat> until it's had power. Give it power. Now they come on. That's so that the battery doesn't go dead when it's being transported. So we'll just disconnect that for now. That one's fixed. I got another one to look at as well. The last one I looked at was a six volt unit. This one is a 12 volt unit. It has two batteries and two batteries are connected together in series. You got a big X on here. It says ASAP. <laughs> it's not working. That's why it's here. Let's connect up the batteries. Positive to one. Negative to the other. And then the jumper between the two of them. To connect the negative and positive terminals. Of the two 6 volt batteries. To give us 12 volts. Now this one will be like the other one, it's going to have a, uh, a shutdown. So that should not, light should not come on until this has had power to it. Once this has had power applied, then uh, it should automatically come on when you hit the switch. Let's hook it up to power. I'll just connect the hot and the neutral and everyone knows that white goes to black and black goes to white, right? Everyone knows that, right? That's the right way to hook things up. Now we're safe. Make sure that that ground wire is not touching anything or connected to anything. Let's uh, apply power and see that it does not work. When I press the switch on the side, the test switch is not working. In fact, there's no light over here to indicate that it's got any power whatsoever and yet we know that it does so we gotta pull the board and see what's wrong with this one of course one could just use their nose on this hmm it smells like burnt transformer to me but what do I know what I do know is this one's using Robertson screws could this have possibly have been made in Canada could have been could have been made in Canada does it say where it was made um, I think this was made in Canada it has a it has a, a 250 area code which is a BC area code this was probably made here okay. it's got Robertson screws yeah it, it does kind of smell like like transformers burned out it smells like burnt transformer that's what it smells like we can uh, check this out quite easily with the 
multimeter. We'll just turn this on ohms mode and uh, and see what uh, what type of resistance we get. This has got a dual a dual winding on it because it can run 120 or 347. The red wire is the 347. So between the black and the white, there's nothing there. Let's just check between one of the other windings here. We'll check between the black and the red. This is the 347 winding between the 120 and the 347 and we have 12 ohms so the white the white wires probably got a thermal a thermal cutout on here that's failed and I bet if I looked on here this transformer is it smells like it's it smells bad it's it's it smells bad it's bad yeah so I guess I'll have to try to find a new transformer we got another transformer I'm going to try on here. This is a 16 volt from an alarm system. That's probably in about the right ballpark as to what this original one was. I'm thinking it was probably either 12 or 18 volts or something in there. It's going to be regulated down. Obviously it's just for the charging circuit. So I'm just creating a, a jumper that I can connect up to the transformer and see whether it works. connect this up to the the output terminals because the other transformer is open as we determined before this one is open I mean there is enough room inside the cabinet that this transformer could actually be put right inside we want to make sure that the, that the light actually works and that the voltage is correct so do that and then I get my little power cord here I can plug this in Make sure nothing's touching here. And we got power. And we got lights. That uh, looks like it's probably going to do the job. We'll check our charging voltage going to the battery. Charging voltage is. Better get my polarity correct. Make sure I'm correct for everybody that's watching. Yeah, 14 volts. Yeah, I think we're okay. Because once the battery gets fully charged, it should uh, shut it down anyway. But our our batteries are are charging at 14 volts, which is right what we would expect them to be. Of course, you guys can't see that because of the reflection. But trust me, it's 14 volts. If I unplug the power, power goes off. The emergency lights come on. And they'll be like the other one. When you disconnect the battery, it resets until it gets power. And now when I give it power, the lights will come on. Actually, a doorbell transformer will do the same. I think I've got one of those kicking around. That will fix it. It's a little doorbell transformer. So let me just remount the board. And then we'll get the transformer installed and get it uh, wired up. Okay, I got my good old Craftsman reversible drill from like that's falling apart. I guess I might want to tighten that up. But uh, hey, this was my dad's old drill, so this thing's been around for ever. 1960s, 1970s, who knows, but it's uh, been around for a while, that's for sure never failed it's AC powered and uh, yeah it um, it's good I got a couple small screws here I'm gonna put a couple pilot holes in the uh, the box so I can screw the transformer down and wire it up so I'm just gonna bring this off the edge of the bench so I don't drill a hole into the bench while I do this wish me luck Now that I have the holes in the base, 
we'll just wire up the transformer and then install it. So these are my input wires to the circuit board. All right, got a couple screws. Let's uh, see if I can secure this down here. The screws are gonna stick out the bottom a bit, and that's why I put them on the bottom instead of on the back, just so that uh, if they stick down, it won't be a problem. All right, I got my transformer mounted. Let's hook up the power to it so we can test it. Got the batteries are connected. I'll just hook up my power. Connect the wire up here. It comes on. When I open this up to simulate a power failure, the lights come on and the lights go out. Lights come on, lights go out. And of course if you press the test switch, the lights come on. So, problem solved. New transformer, use the doorbell transformer. That saves this emergency light from being scrapped and replaced. Make a couple dollars off this. I had to go pick up a doorbell transformer for it. I thought I had one, but I didn't, so I went and got one. So, um, one more fixed. Anyway, that's two of these things fixed. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.